This is Star Talk, Sports Edition. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, coming to you from my office at the Hayden Planetarium, right here in New York City at the American Museum of Natural History. Today's topic, modern stadium design and the tech that informs it. Mm. So who do I have here? I've got Ben Brillat. Did I pronounced that right. You did. Thank you. Ben, welcome. Thanks very much. You work for IBM? I do. You design stadiums? Wait, well, you got a title here. Global Chief Architect for Sports and Entertainment Services. Yes. That's a lot of syllables to say you design stadiums. Well, I design technology for stadiums. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't want to I don't want to cause any fights. Uh so yeah, yeah. yeah okay. All stadiums. right. Yeah. So we got we'll get back to you in a minute. Gary? Yes. Always good. Yeah, good to be here. Gary O'Reilly. Chuck. Hey. You're my people. Yes, you're my correct. sports people. <laughs> my, 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 my sports people. So recently I visited the SoFi Stadium just outside of Los Angeles. Absolutely. They're, they're in the middle of building it. Yep. And I'm looking at the numbers at $5 billion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Since when do stadiums cost that much? Mm. Big Dude. Numbers. Recently. Recently? <laughs> no, since exactly. when? Since, <laughs> yeah. since 20 minutes ago? Just saying. Um, 70,000 seats yep. opening summer 2020. And it didn't look like they're going to be. I, I, you're I, saying it's, they're not making it. I'm, I'm, well, I'm saying. What, you're saying. I, I, I was there. I, right. I flew over it. It didn't look like. But anyhow. So they, the I, I'll tell you this much. They better be ready by August of 2020 because they already said goodbye to the old stadium Ooh, last year. Yeah, otherwise, they're playing for the, in, in, for the football in, team. They're playing, they're playing pickup game in the, in the right. parking and, lot. Oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Oh, my God. Just like you could tailgate and watch the game at the same time. And be in it. Right. And be in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you missed it. <laughs> Take it back. Right. Little help. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So uh, that stadium houses the L.A. Rams and the Chargers. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, Ben, so let me just get a little more. We'll get back to that. I got footage of me visiting it. Uh, but, Ben, uh, how long has, has IBM had such a thing? IBM engagement started really with the Atlanta Olympics in the 90s. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, okay. nice. You guys been in the space yeah. for, yeah. so, that space for a while. We, so you were the chief technology architect for the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. But that was way after the Olympics. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so didn't a have totally your, different design. They yeah. didn't have the benefit of your brilliance. No, although some of the fiber infrastructure actually ended up being reused. Okay. Oh, really? But, you mean recycled and reused or? Nope, nope. It was still there, still good. And you just actually, okay, well, way to save them some money. So, so how are you combining this sports and tech at IBM? Because in these stadiums where big muscle football players play, it don't look like you have ever played football in your life. No, I have not. <laughs> I don't wanna. So how do, how do you land in that pot? Yeah. So IBM is approaching uh, technology and stadiums really from two sides. The first is sort of the digital, where we're doing AI programs and how can we help coaches make better decisions about players? Oh, how can we analyze? The game itself. Yep. yep. How mm. can we analyze data? Be able to uh, take a coach and put them virtually after the game in a VR room, standing next to their player, and say. Can I understand better why he missed that or why he made that? Can I watch this from a 3D perspective? Why not like put that. him in during the game? Well, wouldn't that be cool? The, like right. you, have, you have a holographic coach on the field, right? Yep. I think so that, that's, that tech is almost around now. You can virtually, with only a few seconds delay, you can put someone back into the space yeah. and okay. analyze that play almost real time. And that's where I come in, actually, is that the limitation now is the technology and the data bandwidth available on the field. Mm -hmm. How can we get enough antennas, enough kinds of radios to be able to move that information from the field to the stadium? In real time. In real time. To make real time decisions. Exactly. And so I'm involved in all of the physical infrastructure, the antennas, the cell phone radios, the Wi-Fi access points, the security cameras, uh, all of the physical tech that makes the digital tech possible. So I just got I just got to tell you, I, I'm really feeling good listening to you because I, I led a geeky life, but it was early enough in the geek timetable that we we'll, we we'll all not I because I was bigger than others, but most <laughs> of my geek friends all got beat up by by the football players. Right. OK. Until the football players needed the geeks to help them with their computer homework. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right. That, so the balance of power changed. And so now you are enabling professional sports. Absolutely. 
And now you are like a patron saint of what enables them to do what they do. You have now you have sports people as your protectors. Yeah, I mean, we want that data. We want them healthy. We want to know where they were. We want to know that predictive insights in the injuries. Yeah, that means he's never gotten a wedgie. That's well, that's <laughs> but see, well, that's, that, that may I be mean, true. You bring a football player. player. <laughs> However, this isn't the show to explore that. <laughs> yeah. It's the one thought that's Look, crystallized I'm in my mind. Saying, all, the, all my people got wedgies <laughs> right, coming <exactly>. out. <laughs> Well, I, I think mean, what Neil is saying is, before you leave here, well, I, I mean, uh, yeah, just watch yourself. Yeah, I got a linebacker yeah. on speed dial. There you go. All right. But that is a cool thing because you can yeah. just be like, yo, bro, one line of code and I can make it so that you. <laughs> one line, right, one one line, line of code, code bro. Oh, you, that'd be a great done. name of a company. One line of code. One line of code. Oh, man. That's all the difference. Wait, so at uh, what point are you, are you brought in? So I'm rich and I want to build a stadium. At what point do I call you? The earlier, the better. Right. Uh, so we started in Atlanta when it was still a hole in the ground, uh, mm -hmm. literally still there because the technology, particularly as we start to talk about, of course, Atlanta is a 4G stadium. But as we look at 5G, <laughs> more, <laughs> damn. more and more antennas means more and more wires to the antennas. That's right. And so we actually have to bury conduit in the concrete before it even gets poured. So you have to have a design for that ready to go mm -hmm. right from day enough zero. conduit to future proof it. Okay. Yes. Why not Wi-Fi this thing? Save on the wires. So all of that Wi-Fi means more and more, more and more access more to, points right. and every access point. So while it's Wi-Fi to your handheld device, mm -hmm. the access point in the ceiling needed a wire. That smoke detector in the ceiling needed a wire. You have to get the more there's a wire somewhere. That's right. For me. <laughs> that's my answer. That's Thank right. You. In fact, the more mobile devices, the more wires right. behind the scenes. Uh, so in fact, wireless is just a nah. It's a distance yes. description. So we got we got some footage of me at the SoFi Stadium right. outside of uh, outside of Los Angeles. The LA the, the, the Chargers and the Rams. Correct. Correct. Both will play there. That's right. And obviously un unless Not they play on the each same other. Day. <laughs> unless they play each other. <laughs> right. Unless they play each other. There you yeah. go. Then they do play on the same day in the same stadium. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. I'll go to that game. You'll go to that game. All yeah. right. <laughs> so um, so I, I visited it, and one thing I couldn't help notice is just the enormous roof. Mm -hmm. A lot of thought went into that roof. So let's check out this high-tech roof. What is that <laughs> transparent roof made of? It's is called it? an ETFE system. How transparent is it? About 60% from what I understand. Oh, so what you're saying is it... Uh, It'll block out about 60% of sunlight that could come in. That's what I Either understand. reflect it yeah, yes. or do something else with it. That's correct. Okay. So those are 60 foot by 60 foot grid areas. I see them. And then what we do is we build that frame on the ground outside the building. And as we load this diaphragm in place, we go ahead and put those in and we pull the ETFE system over time. How long does it stay transparent? It'll stay, stay transparent from the time we finish the project on. Not as long as birds poop on it. You well, got a way to clean that there off? There is a way to clean it. How do you, how you do that? And they'll now, go look, up there. I don't see any way you, anybody's going up there to clean bird poop. There's, is, there is access up there and there is a gutter system up there to go ahead and allow for washing down and also Oh, for so you rain. can hose it off. That's one thing we can do as far as, as far as the birds though, is also use a falcon air. So you can actually have falcons that come around here to keep birds away. Does that help? That's I'm very, trying to be as smart as this man. That's very, that's very National Geographic, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, you glad you turned up for this show? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's a little insight. I want to say window, but I'm, I've done it now. On to what's going on in these, this 21st century stadium. What else could we build into a roof like that? Because that's a massive expanse. Of... And by roof, he means bird toilet. <laughs> yeah, so I mean... Is it so? Are we going to have solar panels? Because California, I think every new construction has to have solar panels. Thank God. Um, can we use it like a TV screen? Can we project things out? What What could we do to play with this and make it just yeah, more I mean, than just a roof? I mean, you'd love to, right? The technology for solar panels. I mean, the problem is the weight today, right? Uh, can you make it light enough to be able to cover the surface and still have it span that enormous distance, which it now spans? We've moved from stadiums where you used to have, you know, limited sight view seats mm -hmm. to stadiums where there's no such thing in the entire place because these roof materials have gotten so light that now everyone can see uh, from everywhere. So uh, the more technology you want to put up there, of course, the heavier it is. Uh, we actually had Wait, just to be clear, heavier roofs require more structures to hold it up that would block your view. Potentially. A light roof 
you don't have to hold up the roof. Yeah, you can stand further away. Stand from further it, yeah. away. So that's so what you meant. Fulcrum. Yeah. When you, yeah. Okay, I was just trying to follow that. Okay, so go it on. becomes a span. Exactly. So yeah. how much distance are you trying to span? How light do you need that material to be in order to make the span so that you don't have a blocked view? How does a roof like that affect what you would be able to do in the stadium? You know, it's interesting. The in Atlanta, and I'm, presumably they'll have the same problem uh, in Los Angeles as well. The fact that these materials are now plastics, you know, if we look at an older yeah. building, uh, like if we're in the, the lower levels here, uh, concrete, rebar, iron, uh, the RF energy of the city. Radio frequency. Yes, the radio. To be clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, doesn't make it into your basement here, right? Whereas when you build out of these new materials, these hyper thin plastics transparent materials uh one of the challenges we're actually having is that all of the rf energy of the city is penetrating into the building now so and you don't want that you Does don't that create want that. interference absolutely okay. yeah Whoa. how can you deliver cell service to eighty thousand people sitting in a space which need low signal strength because they're not that far from the antenna but wouldn't you want to not provide them cell service? Wouldn't you want to block their cell service and provide them your own particular frequency? Because Absolutely. then you can determine what they're going to watch, see, hear, and how they're going to interact with the stadium and other people because you're the puppeteer uh, electronically at that point. Absolutely. Damn, Absolutely. Chuck. That's <laughs> who you work for. <laughs> what, are you, what are you? Are you an IBM well, operative? Yeah. On the <laughs> Captain Verizon. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you work for a DAS company, a distributed yeah. antenna system, which is the local cellular system in a stadium. And the problem with that is we want to run our DAS in a stadium and not have it leak out into the city right. and not have the city leak in. So these new materials are really ch creating challenges in how we can do that successfully. Can't you put wires in it and turn it into a Faraday cage? Yeah, you, you could. But you again, Faraday cage? Um, please, yeah. well, we would like to know about a Faraday cage. <laughs> it has nothing to do with prisons or anything. Oh, thank uh, gosh. It's, Faraday is credited with this. So um, if you have something that conducts electricity, like wire mm -hmm. or any kind yep. of metal, and you surround yourself in it, mm -hmm. then electromagnetic energy cannot penetrate that surface because it tries to get through and it gets conducted into, into the surface the surf, right. and it never goes inside. And if so, for example, you can walk out in a lightning storm and right. if you're surrounded by one of these cages, lightning will hit, it will never go inside your bubble. And the aliens can't read your thoughts. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the, the, the aluminum foil hat. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> it's just nothing more than an aluminum foil hat. <laughs> That's really what it is. That's what, <laughs> exactly what it is. Okay, sorry, go on. Yeah. Pick it up. Uh, <gasps> so <clears throat> with these new materials, the it's just become very difficult to create the separation that we need to deliver that kind of service. So that's meaning new antenna designs, new antenna placements, more antennas. Uh, in fact, in Atlanta, we have a first of a kind deployment of the cellular phone antennas are actually under the seats in the upper levels of the stadium. Wow. Because what we want is very low signal power to only go a few meters to the nearby seats. And it right. sterilizes your gonads. Ah. <laughs> well, I don't feel a little warm right now. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, that's so that you get strong signal. Oh, right. Don't you want that? <laughs> Ticket sales have just gone down in Atlanta. <laughs> we, we did a lot of testing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, a lot of engineering went into making that work. Another interesting fact that we don't think about much here on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, it is in every design point. What do you do about earthquakes? Ooh, can you earthquake proof a stadium? Yes. So at, at the SoFi tour that I took, I mm. had to ask him about it. Let's check it out. This bowl structure is a separate element to the roof structure. All right. And it's separated by what's called an MSE wall, mechanical stabilized earth wall. So it's panels that go in. So if you were to walk through the rest of the stadium, you'd go to a back uh, area that has about 12 foot of gap in between so that this stadium it can, can change. It, it can move independently. It can move it. independently. And then the blade columns support the roof structure that actually go to butterfly caps and struts and to dead men. And that acts independently with isolators at the top that can move up to 81 inches. So you can sustain an earthquake, it sounds like. Yes, we can. <laughs> that's, that's, that's code for the, this, the stadium can shake and bake it can shake and it, make. It's got a little bit of a little bit of movement to it. It does. And you got and, it. And you wouldn't even know because as you walk in, 
we have a moat lid. So there is a moat that goes all the way around that most people don't know. A moat. A moat. M-O-A-T. M-O-A-T. With crocodiles. Exactly. <laughs> it could be. It could. You because, see Because, I mean, the history of learning about earthquakes and other sort of issues is you don't want movement over here to have to be felt in the rest of the structure. No. Right? Because that could take down the whole structure. Correct. So everything can have some independence. Right. And then it just lives yeah. as almost an organic element. And you have these, almost like these cut lines. Right? Yes, expansions. expansions. Yeah, yeah. The usual, that would yeah. be thermal expansions and things. Right. Yeah. So Ben, you, working in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta just a few years ago, mm -hmm. did they have to put in any sort of disaster proofing, if not earthquakes, some other kind of protection? Uh, I mean, it has to be built for the environment that's in, right? So Atlanta is a very wet, right. uh, very windy place. Uh, you know, the movable roof is there because Atlanta has quite a lot of days when it's rainy. Um, so the You can't play football in the rain anymore. Uh, uh, in my day... <laughs> You couldn't even see the gridiron. That's how much snow would be on the field. And they'd still play. Right. How many, how many fans were there? I don't know. But it's in my day, the fans. The in fans my day, we played football with a baseball bat. <laughs> That's right. That's how tough it was. <laughs> right. Sorry. No Continue. Problem. I know you're not apologizing to me. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, yeah. So all of the facilities are instrumented throughout. So within the roof, uh, within the columns that support it, this uh, structural steel, the structural concrete, there's instrumentation throughout all of it, which today is more wires that we have to bring to be able to measure the the stresses that are on a given piece of steel. When you say instrumentation, you mean diagnostic yeah, tools. Absolutely. So you always know the structural health of your facility. Yeah, so in Atlanta, there are pedals that open and close to move the roof, and you want to know the health of the pedal system. So all of that is instrumented so that you know that it's in balance and all of the motors are operating correctly. Okay, so, so, you're not, so you wouldn't be taken by surprise exactly. if anything was about to fail. Yep. Thinking about what you said about footballers can't play in this rain, da-da-da-da-da. So when you or someone like you is involved in design in a stadium, who are you looking to please? The owners, the coaches, the players, the fans, mm -hmm. yourself, why all would of that the above? Be, why would that be mutually exclusive? No, I'm just wondering, is there, you know, the owner says, I want it done this way, and the owner's the guy with the paycheck, therefore the owner gets what it wants, or is there- Even if that might conflict with something else. Correct. Got yeah. it. So. I, it, I think it starts with the fans, right? Because- Because they're paying. About, that's right. They're paying the owners. They're paying, right. They they are the, the owner works for the fans. That's, that's right. right. They're they're the source of revenue for everything else that yeah. comes after it. And what you want to deliver is a great experience for them. And with stadiums, huge stadiums, they're getting bigger. They're getting more complex because you have to compete with the fact that it's not that expensive to buy an 85 inch television with that's what I 4K did. Ultra HD. Yep. That's what and I did. Put it in your man cave. That, that's what I did. All right, hey man, Paul, you're, yeah. you're working against yourself there, Ben. So, <laughs> so, that's what I did. No, that's that's got to be the thought process of every owner yeah how do, how do we get you out how do we, we get want you out, out of the of house, house. Right. right on well you can give crappier television coverage <laughs> that's why well, i missed that we got to be at the game that's true. we're going to show the replay only at the game yeah. Well, yeah. well there you go well we want to do both right we want to have you have fun on the days you can make it have fun on the days you can't make it you want to have everything uh bringing together best possible experience but the stadium itself is really competing for that let me get you out of your house in atlanta or in los angeles to come in to the stadium we gotta take a quick break when we come back more on the innovative designs of modern stadiums on star talk sports edition Star Talk, we're back. Star Talk Sports Edition. Gary O'Reilly. Hey, yep. Former footballer. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that. Yeah. Chuck. Yes. <laughs> who do we have here? Ben. Ben. Brillat. Brillat. Thanks. I, I who, no, None of us even knew that such a person as you existed. The tech geeky person who empowers modern stadiums to do and be what they need to be to satisfy the fans, the owners, the players, all of the above. The Cheap great movie. and wonderful Oz of stadiums. <laughs> that's well, what that is. That's what you are, yeah, man. That's what that is. I mean, we hope it's that way, right? If it, we don't want to be too noticed. Right? Man. Right on. So as you know, we're featuring my footage from my visit to the SoFi Stadium 
under construction. They're not even built. Outside of Los Angeles. It's great because one of the landing routes and takeoff routes from LAX mm -hmm. goes right over the stadium. So you just look out the window there. It's very cool. That is That's cool. That's why I know it didn't look like they'd be ready when they said they'd be ready. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> but a lot, of, uh, a lot of late nights coming up. <laughs> <laughs> there's the exterior design, but there's also what's going on on the inside. And as you said, the user experience comes first. That resonates with what I learned from the designers of this stadium. Let's check it out. So and what the, is the Oculus? So the Oculus is actually the, the, the TV yeah. screens and or scoreboards, or everything, everything that will be announced. The world's about. largest scoreboard. Yeah. And where's it going to be? Is it going to be in the middle or somewhere no, else? No, it actually follows the line of all this. So right where that green box is, yeah. that hydraulic box, imagine about eight feet away from that, mm -hmm. we start building sections of it, and we start building sections and we stack sections on it. Such and as this one, too, on this side as well? All the way around the entire bowl. Uh -huh. And then we go ahead and put a strand jack similar to this assembly up here. And we introduce load and we pull down. It pulls on the roof. It weighs 2 million pounds when it's completed with components. Yeah. We assemble it here. Oh. We commission it here. And we take it all the way up. And you hoist it up. And we hoist it up. So when you're standing on level A, you see that guy there in the yellow? Yeah, so that's him. level 8. And then level 9 above, mm -hmm. you'll actually be staring right out at that Oculus. Got it. So you're going to have those types of seats. In those but he can views. still see the field. Still see the field. So that right. that was access for cheap, the cheap seats. The cheap helping seats. those guys out. Yeah. yeah. It seems to be there's an arms race with stadiums now for the world's biggest, uh, like, Jumbotron or Span screen. Jumbotron, that's or, so 80s, dude. I know. I haven't been to a game in a long time. Can you tell? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the, Atlanta's the current record holder, so they're... But they're trying to beat Atlanta. Absolutely. Over at SoFi. Yep. Oh, ooh, ooh. see, he, he's he's like, do you yeah, see him? And yeah, right. You were. You feel it. Yeah, he did. Right. I, I, he, his <laughs> he, face got a little red. up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he got a little buff. A little, yeah, little yeah. chest beating going on right there. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So now uh, this will definitely be the world's largest screen in uh, or fan screen in the world after yeah. it's done? Yeah, so th the new Oculus here has screen here services. Here in, in SoFi. In SoFi. It has screen services on both sides of the circle. So it's not just a single ring. There's display elements on both sides of the circle that's hanging down. Ooh. So it's, oh, it's a double it's sided. It's inside, screen. outside. It's a Kandinsky painting <laughs> of jumbo screens. Oh. Kandinsky. Man, he's damn. He's, he's, out, he's on something today. Man, Jack. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know who said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's play the game here. What are the tech? could you introduce to improve something like this oculus what could what could then take it to another level because this seems as just chuck says a bit of an arms race yeah i mean the the holy grail really is uh to have vr players on the field right oh my projected augmented reality more than vr really yeah but augmented reality players projected onto the field we're still some ways away from that uh -huh. but what would uh, i don't uh, that get would it. be so cool i don't get it what so would you check do? it out so an instant i asked him please oh i'm sorry so <laughs> who am i did, i know who you're are, are you there <laughs> do you work for ibm no <laughs> Well, I mean, let's just take this example. If you are an Atlanta fan and uh, your team is playing in Los Angeles, you want to be able to go to Atlanta right. and watch that game on, on that the field, field in front of you in your oh, home As a matter stadium. of fact, they do that oh, now. Oh, so I could be in the field. They don't see me, but they run through me. Well, you could have that, maybe. You could also have just a, an away game played at home. Uh, so, right. You could have so like they have viewing yeah. parties now for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Your team goes to another city, right? So you all put on VR and you all in this in and their stadium. Now you're in in their place, but you're in your, stadium, in your stadium watching the game on your, your field. Hot oh, yeah. yeah. So you're so here's the thing: as a stadium owner, you gotta love this because that means everybody's gotta buy hot dogs. And, That's and, true. and they're soft drinks. That's true. And, and they're not watching and, on the 85 and, inch. And not flat watching. Film. They're actually watching the field, just okay. like a regular game. Give them a reason to get out of home. Give them another reason to, to get out of the and, house. No, get out of home and go to the bar and put on your. Because <laughs> 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 you know, the truth is, no, actually, Neil makes a really good point. The truth is, if you bring that technology to a stadium, it will only be a very short period of time before bar owners bring that technology to their venue. Okay, well, they there get a go. miniature version a of the stadium. A miniature version, right, and then basically you you'll be more watched. work for me. You say that works for you too. <laughs> no, no, he said more work for him. <laughs> more work for He's like, hey, guess what? I'm good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wait, so is that real? Is that, I mean, we're really going not, there? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, the display projection technology with Pokemon, is the problem. Uh, uh, Pokemon Go. That's right. Yeah. If they can just show up in places. So, 
so we could do it today with looking through your phone, right? But that's not the best experience. No, you want to be able to look at it in a seamless way. So there's right. a couple of barriers, one of which we're about to solve with 5G, which right. is the ability to get that data out of the field real time, uh, recording uh, what they're really called voxels, the volumetric image data, so that you can project from any this position. This is a three-dimensional pixel. Three-dimensional pixel yeah. and get that out of the current stadium. So 5G will help with that. Where we're falling uh, a little short still is in the display technology. So right now you need something like maybe Google Glass, right? I was going to um, say an that's... augmented reality right. display to look at it. Eventually we'll be be able to project it in fog or something like that. You know that technology is still a ways off, but mm -hmm. I mean they're working on it. Damn. Man, that is so cool. That... I mean, like, just how big but in you? a way how though, but let's spec, let's, so. let's 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 little, let's play this out just for a second now, because see, if I'm an NFL player. And I'm smart, and I hear you say what you just said. You're no longer my friend that helps me. You are now my competition, and now we go back to where jocks beat the hell out of geeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay? The because big, The biggest regressive. <laughs> exactly. All right. Because let's be honest. What you just said there um, is one step away instead of an augmented reality, which is basically the real-time transmission of data, yeah. mm -hmm. to why do I need that? I'll just create the data myself and transmit it so that you're seeing a game that is really an algorithm that even though it may be predetermined, it's still a game that happens, right? And you can watch football. So you want, Nobody it, gets hurt. AI, isn't that just, Nobody isn't gets that just, it's AI football. Isn't that AI just John football. Madden football? AI football. What, it, it, yeah. No, it's not John Madden because see, John Madden, you're playing, whereas this would be would be an you're, indeterminate algorithm. That oh, we're, 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 so none of the outcomes are predetermined, uh, and you would see a real game. Right. Well, so one thing about if you do your your integrations well and beautifully, often people won't notice it. It'll be seamless. A seamless part of their experience. So I, I talked about what's what's going on that might be hidden or what might be yeah. um, part of the visitor experience that they might not be thinking about yet they benefit from it at SoFi Stadium. Check it out. Cool. In modern times, football teams keep track of their players mm -hmm. in with high tech monitoring systems and GPS how far they've moved. Yep. Uh, will there be any sort of high tech sensor systems? Yeah. And that can be invoked yep. at it's field actually, level? It's actually not GPS based, it's RF based. <clears throat> okay. And so we have a ring of basically sensors around. So when the players walk out of the dressing room, they have a, a chip in their pads that gets turned on basically when they, ac then when they exit the locker room. And then uh, within the playing surface, basically, uh, they track the movements. They can then figure out things like velocity and top speed and, and all. Right. So, 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 but that's not unique off. to the stadium, if everyone has a chip in the, the modern NFL. The league basically mandates that system. And Plus for the health and well-being of the players too, yep. right? Right. You can track how, how far they run, how fast they run, how much they're on field, etc. That means you can also measure how fast they decelerate in a block. Yeah. Like you're running and I can run at you and I got your speed all the time. Bam! You go from 20 miles an hour to zero in, in, a, in a meter or whatever. Right, right. So, Ben, why are they using RF technology if 5G is basically available? So, it depends. What is that sensor trying to accomplish? So, on a high school field, you have GPS. You're out on, in the air. You can see the satellites. The GPS trackers will fit in their pads. More importantly, the GPS satellites can see you. The GPS. <laughs> well, no, but that's okay. Uh, and indoors, now you have, again, the roof, which yep. is blocking those signals. You need to provide some sort of local system that can now provide that location data. Okay. So, so 5G building... is not a local system. That's a... Well, 5G is a local system, and they're... I mean, but... even within the stadium, local? Absolutely. Oh, so oh. to that technology of DAS that I mentioned earlier, we have to build our own 5G network right. inside of a stadium to meet the density of people who are there, you know, 80,000 devices in, well, we might even call 160,000 uh, if you got a watch and a phone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, devices in a small space. Now you need dedicated electronics, uh, dedicated antennas and radios just for that stadium by itself. But mm -hmm. 
that tracking versus making phone calls, all different kinds of 5G that are starting to come to life. Mm -hmm. And the density, the number of devices as we look at IoT, and really those sensors are IoT, uh, is just going to balloon as what we What IoT stands for? Internet of Things. So That's what that... That's what that abbreviates? Yes. Internet of things. Yes. Things okay. should never be abbreviated. Yeah. That word. <laughs> thanks it's for It's not important I was enough. like this. Thanks for clearing it up. <laughs> so, uh, as, Internet of stuff. I don't know what it is. <laughs> as, I, as I sit here and listen to you explain that, Ben, my, I'm, I'm looking at my mo my cell phone is dating and out of date within two years. Yeah. 7G. So how do we future proof? Oh, please, please. What's coming that we can do that you are that you're going to be able to jump on and utilize. Yeah. Yeah. How about 7G, 8G, 10G? Yeah. It'll all be there. The, right. the way that we future proof in our architecture is we say we don't have a crystal ball. The only thing we can do is put more pathways for more antennas. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you have the ability to put today you have one antenna in this room, tomorrow you have two, four years from now you have four or five. I got, I got, I got, to, I got to interrupt you. Okay. And back to the future too which took place in 2015 mm -hmm. or 16, I forgot, somewhere in our past right now. Mm -hmm. um, back when it was made, people had fax machines. Okay, mm -hmm. that was the thing. Oh, that that's it? cool. That's oh, how wow. you send. Yeah. So they imagined in that distant future that households would have multiple fax machines. <laughs> okay. Of course. Yeah. So when... Marty was fired from his job. It was sent to him by fax, and every fax machine in his house out came yep. the thing, yeah. you're, you're fired. fired. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, wow, that's the future. Right. We'll have more than one fax machine. So isn't that a little bit short-sighted to say, let's just put more of what we already have? No, we're not so much putting more. We're putting more capability, the, mm -hmm. just the path. We don't know what kind of cable will go in it. We don't know what kind of antenna okay. will be there. So you assume it needs a path. You, you need to have a spot to put it, right? And okay. uh, that's becoming particularly challenging because uh, architects also want their stadiums to be beautiful, right? You want to experience the technology, but not have to see it. So you need to really design in from day zero mm. the ability to put all of this electronics there and be able to hide it. Tell me about helmet cams. That would be another, I, it'd be first, it would be interesting just to monitor helmet concussion, the, the, the mm -hmm. forces that operate on a helmet. Yep. You should be able to do that. We my iPhone yeah. can measure accelerations no matter what I'm doing. A helmet could do that too. Absolutely. Okay. So, but not only that, just point of view cameras. Like, suppose I'm going to experience a game as a as a as a fan, and I can just flick on. Let me see what the quarterback is looking at. Let me see what the center. Let me see what the wide receiver. And that's their camera. Mm -hmm. What's what's yeah? What, how about that? So with with five G, we will be able to do that, especially in a sport like football where you have a lot of room to put. Uh, the heavier batteries and the the camera sensors, things like that. Well, like, oh, um, this is too heavy. This yeah, <laughs> but well, that's a baseball player. But, right. <laughs> but that's a oh. soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the good news, yeah. You guys, when you get yeah. clipped on the side, yeah. oh, oh, we're man, that's it. Oh, I can't get up. The weight's too much. I'm falling. <laughs> I can't get up. You soccer player. What the oh, yeah. hell is wrong with y'all? Well, we got good news We're for precious. We got good news for soccer football. Uh, Have you? Is that with is my team going to win? <laughs> well, with the three D, with the three D volumetric pixel imaging, mm -hmm. it's now possible computationally to recreate any view from an array of say thirty two cameras around the stadium. This is like bullet time. Yeah, yeah. like oh, in the Matrix, exactly. where you can get any right. camera and, angle. And just, yeah. yeah. So you, as a viewer, could pick. You wouldn't even have to be limited to a specific helmet cam. You could pick the view right in between the two helmets and have that computed for you dynamically from the images that are already taken. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Ooh, that's Ooh, bad. That's, that. that's badass right there. See, now, once again, it seems like you're working. At, okay, so this would be, an, see, that's something that you want to keep to an in-stadium uh experience right yeah, to because get, to be able to come and look on your phone and see a completely different game than you're actually watching on the field right. why be limited yeah. to some why, cameraman right. who's parked on some spot on the sidelines yeah. you yeah. you can actually curate your own game in real time as Ooh. you're sitting there yep. let me see that replay Ooh. you know that that's kind of cool yeah you could end up you know with twitch style re-edits of mm. Mm. Not we got to take a break. Can you hang around for like the third segment? Absolutely. Because normally we just sort of, you know, chew the fat, but I want to chew the fat with you in the room. Sounds great. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. All right. This is Star Talk Sports Edition. We'll be right back. We're back. Star Talk. We have a special guest. 
brought in from central Pennsylvania, where this dude lives. Nobody's out there. But, <laughs> well, no, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only one there now he's here Ben Brillat now, thanks for hanging out normally we just sort of chew the fat this segment but I want you there thanks while we chew the fat sounds good yes there we go all right we are. so I just I, I'm curious about some I, I'm looking at the rate at which stadium design is changing and that always tells me things it says if the rate is changing rapidly now we can praise any newly opened stadium but if the rate is fast, it means in five years, that's going to be an old stadium. Just like technology itself. Technology itself. Yeah. You're actually... Yourself so on... So how you feel about this? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's good news for me, right? Uh, the more tech job changes... Security. Job, yeah, security. job security. Job security, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but now, do you build that into your design? Yeah, because well, he said to... he future-proofs by putting uh, uh, conduits to. and... And places mm. where you would put stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's capitalization terms for all of these things. You want to be sure you get your money's worth out of it. You need to be able to. Especially when it's $5 billion <laughs> worth of your money. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh, but it is a big challenge. What can you do? How far into that crystal ball can you see? Yeah. And, you know, we make our best attempts at it. But, mm -hmm. you know, some Gary, reflections. Uh, okay. So we, we touched on augmented reality. Now, I'm just thinking if we really throw it a long way away, do we actually need stadiums? Because you're going to sit there with your VR goggles, and I'll give you an immersive suit so you can actually feel the hits yourself yeah. while you're sat there. That's too much. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, well you can dial it up. Just, that's too it much. It just depends. You dial it up or you dial it down. Oh, dial it down. Yeah. 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 So do, oh, can I dial it down to a um, relaxing massage? <laughs> yeah, if you want. It's so, negative three. <laughs> negative <laughs> positive. We, we're talking about we got to get people out of their homes. We need to, you know, our competition isn't this, this, this. It's getting people away from their TV sets and into the arena. But... Is it just going to come down to let's save the money and put it all into the fan experience? You know, you'd, you'd think that would have happened with video gaming. But what has actually happened is that e-gaming has yeah. now become a spectator a sport. Spectator sport <laughs> segment. Absolutely. Watching so, other people play their e-game. But in a yeah. stadium. You go to a stadium, in a stadium to watch on the big screen video games get played. It's true. Don't look at me like that. It's yeah, me doing it. We're all sitting in this room looking at each other the same way. <laughs> it's like, which what? is what the hell is wrong with these people? No. Is that, but it's is a that, huge thing. Is that Gen X? Is that Gen Y? Is that millennials? Yeah. Let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah, who, who, it is. Who's doing this? Yeah, it, the 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 under twenty five. It is. Yeah. yeah, my son is totally into it, and I was completely he's twelve, and right, and I was completely against it until I found out that uh, these uh, so called e athletes. Many of them have uh, seven-figure deals. Yep. And now he gets home, and I'm just like, you better get upstairs and play that video game. <laughs> get, those thumbs, yeah, get those thumbs moving, yeah. boy. What's your problem? <laughs> Don't read a book. That's right. <laughs> are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Are you reading? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Reaction time. Uh, right. So, yeah. Are fans the whole thing here now? Are we... we, we Stadiums were built to honor the gladiators and the, the athletes. Now we are seeing a shift away to the fan, the spectator, the person who provides the income as being the point of view that is the most interesting. Where can we take that? Where can IBM, where can the stadium builders and architects of the future take that? Yeah, I mean, the fans, what we're trying to do with technology is deliver a better game through improved insights into how the players are moving their uh, physio mechanics, the uh, That's a word. coaching calls. Physio mechanics? I hope so. Okay. I, just said it. <laughs> okay. I, just, I like <laughs> learning new words. <laughs> but, uh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, and help the coaches to be able to make the best decisions that they can, help the players to be able to get the most that they can out of their own body to put it into an ever more entertaining game, right? So I think everybody is benefiting. You know, we talk about the greatest players of 60 years ago versus, you know, sort of your mid-tier players today. The mid-tier player had so much more information available to them to help mm -hmm. them train exactly the right muscle, yeah. rest on exactly the right rest day. Uh, you know, the, the level of play is just going up, up, up. All right, so let me ask you this. With that in mind, talking about the fan, let's talk about the owner for a second because here's the way I'm thinking. I spent all this money. I got this high tech stadium. How am I going to make even more money off of all of this 5G 
capable technology. Yeah, what's the business in model? How's Where's the, money, the business model? How's the money come back into his right, pocket? I'm coming, I need that money to come back to me. Yeah. So am I going to be charged to see like certain replays that nobody else can see? Or I mean, what? Because yeah. you know, no what fan. What kind of paywall are you going to put right, up? There's no fan experience that's complete without an owner saying, nah, you don't have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all of that is possible, right? You can have uh you know premium subscriber level features you can have entry features you can have features you can only get if you are actually there that happens today a lot because of tv licensing agreements we can do more when you're physically in the stadium than we can outside can i give a, an example of that a really lame but heartfelt example when i was nine we went to the bronx zoo and we we were very frugal as a family i saw other rich kids they could buy the elephant key there's a plastic key and the elephant nose sticks out. And at every cage, back when animals were in cages, there was a, an information recording. And you put the key in and turn it, and you get a narration about the animal. Right. But you had to buy that. You had to so buy the key. key. Right. And we didn't buy the key. See, so I would just stand next to the rich kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mommy, so, why does this black kid keep following me everywhere? <laughs> I'm sorry. So I... So I I felt uh, I didn't feel like I was a part of the experience right. and it didn't feel good to me, even though I had paid we had paid admission to the zoo itself. It was I, I felt left out. Yeah. Just because I couldn't afford it. And that was a visitor experience in 1968 to 67 that was its version of what you're describing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so picking yeah. up on your I mean, elephant key analogy. I, by the way, I still own that elephant key. Just want you to know. For real. Where's For the, real. I'll bring it in. You did get one. The elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant in the room or, or the stadium. Gambling. When you've got mm. all of this ability to stream and do stuff. Oh my there's god. There's a lot of money. Yeah. Pop, pop. Yeah. So now you're talking there's more about money gambling more money than, gambling than, than, than all the any rest of it. Than yeah. any of it. Oh my god, Gary, you are brilliant. How do we get in on this <laughs> right now? Because okay, I'm telling you. Shut off the cameras. We'll, yes, we'll find out. Find <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Real time betting? While you're in the stadium, mm -hmm. that's a money maker. Shake yeah. it. It it happens a lot more overseas than it does here. We have stronger laws. Anti gambling. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, but so, if I've spent five billion dollars to create my stadium entertainment palace, I'll be pushing really hard to get the gambling laws changed in the state of which. Oh, without a doubt. For yeah. Sure. Every state. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing data that comes just for fantasy football, right? right. So fantasy yeah. football, fantasy baseball, the decision-making data that's available to you for your own fantasy league is would probably knock the socks off of a coach from you know 1955 right. to have access to the kind of information that you're no you know, 1975, home. 1985, yeah. the, right. the data they have. See, so going back to your point, what else happens? How does how does the owner, you the owner, make money? I put a massive big complex of theaters show movies i have shopping malls i was about to say that how why aren't stadiums when we were about to come out of it why don't stadiums have um multiple use built into it's like the stadium sits empty for most of the time yeah. this is the whole deal with sofi i think well, sofi right. so is a great example okay yeah. so okay but so, uh, all right so sofi so in a professional football schedule Today, it's 16 games yep. if you don't go into the playoffs, correct? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So most football, pure football stadiums are used 16 weekends out of 52, yep. period. Then I noticed 10 years ago, 20 years, they tried to turn them into uh, conferencing centers yeah. and things, get a little extra money on the side. But still, yeah. what are you doing? Hold your yeah. event here. Maybe hold a rock concert, okay? Yeah. Yep. But still, you're in a stadium, right? So with SoFi, it has two teams interlaced. Yep. So now it's... 32 weekends yep that's way better than mm -hmm. 16 out of 52 but still you got another 20 weekends when nothing's happening yep. is the business model so lucrative that you can go unused for 20 weekends no you need to drive that attendance up and the use of your facility so in atlanta they have also atlanta united the mls atlanta, soccer your mercedes team. yes facility yeah. so the atlanta united mls soccer team has oh. games that are played yep. there also your people. so that My has people. really <laughs> driven up yep really driven up the usage of the building mm -hmm. um and then, then you get like, all the immigrants come in they, they get something to watch right <laughs> right because all the immigrants play soccer absolutely every every Last one of them. They've put seventy thousand fans 
in oh, the Atlanta easily. Stadium yeah. for MLS soccer. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a huge draw. And not an American among. It's a huge draw. <laughs> There's more. I'm just uh, kidding. No, 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 but in a way, you're right. No. When the World Cup is on and you walk around Manhattan. It is so, people are so indifferent to it's, it. It's, it's like people don't care. And then you look in every bar and it is filled to the brim. Right. right. You know, mm -hmm. and, 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 but, and none of them are American. <laughs> <laughs> but, actually, I, Atlanta's culture is changing with the Atlanta United, actually. Yeah. The Atlanta United are driving fans into that sport at a rate that is Sweet. just crazy. Yeah, I mean, you b walk by bars in Atlanta, and there is an Atlanta United flag. There are kids going to Atlanta. Fantastic. Uh, Atlanta okay. Games. All right, so, so really America might come around on this. Yeah. The soccer thing. Yeah, yeah no, you're getting there. <laughs> right. you're getting, but I think the footprint of the SoFi Stadium, I think, is greater than Disneyland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in including center. parking. Yeah. Okay. Are you for what? There, yeah. It's well, this multi-use district. For yeah. what else is there? What else is no, in that stadium? They're building in the the multiplex hotel. Oh, hotel. The hotel. Okay. There's there's shopping. The shopping. Oh, oh, that's yeah. so the so idea it's a campus. is a, it's a right. campus. It's yes. making a destination yep. area. The yeah. area yeah. becomes a destination. Yep. Got gotcha. you. And the then point. the game is just one other thing you do. One yep. more thing. Something to do that you can walk to. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Because there's a finite amount of people that can go and watch a game. But they want to come and enjoy the experience. So you will build fan parks yeah. outside. All right, I got. I have an obscure, geeky, sciencey comment. Okay, mm -hmm. if I may. I'm ready. Okay. Um, if you're charging a battery, either an electric car or any kind of rechargeable battery, the if it's dead and you start charging it, like the first twenty percent happens very quickly, and then as the battery gets more and more charged, the rate at which it reaches the top gets slower and slower and slower so that last five percent takes almost as long as the previous all the time it took to get to that 95 percent okay do you know why no okay i'm, a, I'm about to find out uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the analogy is a stadium parking lot because in a dead battery you have all these electrons in the wrong place mm -hmm. okay they done served you now you got to punch them back to, so that they can serve you again. They got to swim upstream and they got to park on the other side of that battery. But they can only park in pre designated places. Oh, so, yeah. the, 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 so if you're the first electron upstream, you park anywhere. I'm by the door. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so okay. in a stadium, if I'm early at the stadium, I can park anywhere, I can park within seconds. Yep. The later I come, even if there is a parking spot for me, mm -hmm. it'll take me longer to find it. So that when the parking is almost entirely full and only five slots left, it could take me a half hour to find a parking spot. I have to look for those spots. That's right. why it takes longer to charge the last part of your battery than the first part, because of the parking lot problem. Yeah. Have you solved the parking problems? Yeah, we, we have. Uh, oh. Smart parking systems. Smart parking. So, yeah. And Assigned out, parking? Well, predetermined design parking. We have assigned parking predetermined. We also have smart parking systems. If you've been like in Heathrow Airport mm -hmm. uh, with red and green lights over every single parking spot, so you can look down a hallway and see if there's a green light. Oh, what so are those hidden spots? Yeah, signs that tell you how many are left on each level. Turns out this is a huge source of pollution in cities, too. Yes. So yes. there's companies People working, driving around, but right. not just in parking lots. Period. Yeah. In yeah. every metro place. Driving around, driving around, around, around parking. Parking. Like eighty percent of all cars that are in motion that are not taxis are looking, are looking for, for parking. parking. Yeah. So this, <laughs> this company's trying to solve this now to be able to help you. Uh, there's some new deployments out in Europe of smart parking systems in cities so that you can know I where like to the go. I the fact that you could just see it above all the cars and the green one that's is brilliant. right there. Yep. And, you and get, simple. And that's some little car that's hidden behind the, the, the exactly. SUV. Yeah, yeah, motors, 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 don't you get angry when it happens? I always yeah. flatten their tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now, how many people are now looking for a space and there's only one green light? No, then no. Oh, we meet at the entry. Converge too. on the same <laughs> yeah. space. Yeah. This is like that... breakout. Right? How fast can you drive? <laughs> See, up to this that is park? LA, so Larry David's going to be the going to be there. That's you funny. know that, Larry David. You know of, he's going to be there. His little electric car of curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we yeah. can actually using cameras, we can actually follow your car right. through the parking garage and provide you individually appropriate signage at every turn for where you should go. Oh, to go smart signs. Can you, can you talk signs. to the car? Like, turn left, you idiot. 
Well, you can change no, the sign that they car, can read. Talk yeah. to the thing, right. and I'm going to sit back. <laughs> well, and yeah. that, you know, right. that's exactly yeah. that's where it's Let actually the car going. Let the car park its own name. So. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that is How much super in the cool. game? You park yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, final thoughts, Chuck. What do you have? Um, you know, I'm going to go to a game, uh, and and probably be disappointed yeah. because none of the cool crap we're talking about is going to be there. It's not yet. <laughs> it's not happening. But yet. Will, he'll call. Get his phone number. He'll call you. Exactly. We'll do it together. Gary, I think it's great. I think it's brilliant because everybody wins. The players are going to win. The coaches, IBM could become the best football coach ever, right? All the bio data, all the telemetrics, all the players are going to win and the fans are going to get better experience. So it's a win, win, win. Brilliant. Yeah. What thoughts do you have at night before you go to sleep about all this? I want to make sure that my son, when he goes to have, he's four now, when he goes to a game, that he will be able to have the experience that he is imagining when he gets there. So Ooh. his world his world already he can talk to the house right and have right. the lights turn on he can type because he just talks to his computer the information in the world is at his fingertips 15 your years four -year -old from now child? yeah 15 years like, from now when he's there your four-year-old child's want... running the house with his apps yeah uh, <laughs> alexa hey, change the locks <laughs> <laughs> ah, take that dad <laughs> <laughs> try to get in the house now <laughs> he, he hasn't found that command set yet but <laughs> <Change the locks. laughs> good. Yeah, you better get some really good parental guidance on that. Well, alexa change the locks. <laughs> You know, the world that he imagines is different than I can imagine, and I want him to have a great experience that keeps his attention and keeps him going. So, uh, Here's what I look forward to, because I think about this all the time. Um, I would like imagining tomorrow's technology for many reasons, but including the fact that if it's good enough, it will make everything I think is modern today look old. Ooh. So in the future, I want the technology to not even be anything you are projecting for it. I want it to benefit from innovations, may I say, out of left field. Mm -hmm. Something you didn't even know was on its way in that lands in your lap technologically and you say, oh my gosh, that's a game changer. And with that, there's a future experience for the player, the visitor, yeah. the coach that today we can yet imagine. Sweet. It'd be great. Blood no revenue share. <laughs> that's what I that's, that's a cosmic <laughs> sports perspective. Dude, thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. very much. Very, uh, thanks for coming all this way from central Pennsylvania, which is in the middle of friggin' nowhere. <laughs> it is. All right. Chuck, Gary, mm -hmm. pleasure. Always good. Yeah. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. This has been Star Talk Sports Edition. And as always, I bid you to keep looking up.